are a huge challenge, particularly since we supposedly have one minute to go. But, you know, there's one model of doing these concluding remarks, which is you take voluminous notes and you organize it and try to really do a summary. We don't have time for that. On the other end of the extreme, there's the Jeff Drazen method, which I can tell you about since he's not on, which he just says, this is impossible to summarize. We're so we're all tired. Goodbye. And he closes his laptop and gets up. So I'm trying to go somewhere in between, but really very, very short. And these are just some things that resonated with me uh, during the day, bouncing around in my head and thinking they really made sense. Um, the first from Dr. Reverend Pastor King. Um, something he said, which I don't know if it was apocryphal or not but uh, that some people that he knows or in his community would rather die than uh, take a vaccination that's the product of um, our, our labors. So um, that may be an extreme view, but the fact that that view exists uh, underlines to me how much work we have to do and really what the val what the value is of the discussion and the work that we're doing here. Um, I, I also want to highlight something that that uh, Elliot said at the at the end of his remarks, sort of wrapping it up, which is that um, it was optimistic. You know, there is a confluence of um, uh, of abilities for us to meet the needs of uh, patients and also meet the need for better um, therapies, uh, that it's possible for the clinical research enterprise and societal good to overlap. So I think that I, I agree with that. And I think that's something that we should keep in mind. It won't include everything, but there's certainly an area of overlap there. Uh, perhaps a darker view um, from Dr. Woodcock, which is that, you know, we've been tested and tried by COVID and there have been some successes, but there have been some failures. And Rob highlighted this as well, the massive efforts in uh, creating data that will never be able to be used by clinicians and all of the uh, consequences of that in terms of time and money and effort that could have been used on more productive activities. Um, uh, some of uh, Rob's comments were very, you know, really hit home in terms of the ability of digital technologies to really improve what we're doing and to make uh, make collecting and conducting clinical trials and participating in uh, clinical trials for patients, not just better, but more fun. And, you know, people like technology and, and rather than a burden, we can really improve the system in a way that people will be more uh, willing to participate. I did think, you know, is the color scheme was dark on this slide that he uh, showed and with the fact that we're at a crossroads uh, and it maybe is a too stark a decision uh, between using digital technology to uh, improve health for populations or to use digital technology to optimize finances. And perhaps that's too stark, but it is also a very important thing for us to keep in mind as we make these choices. So I want to give a little bit of time for Esther to summarize as, as well uh, and look to the future. So take it away, Esther. Thank you. Yes, well, I, I will not try to um, to replicate that um, other than to say, you know, there is a lot of optimism for the future. Um, I was struck by what a number of people said, which is we tend to do this every 10 years. And COVID-19 has given us a case study that hopefully has given all of us the motivation that 10 years from now, we're not having the same exact conversations. I think we have the right mix of stakeholders here. Perhaps there are others that need to be brought along as well, but if we all do our parts, I'm very optimistic that we can make some changes, not just in 10 years, but the next two to three years and five years uh, for the patients that Dr. Terrace King and others spoke so eloquently about. Um, so I just wanna thank all of you for your active participation. I know it's been a long day, morning and afternoon, um, being attentive throughout all of those sessions. 
um, was really um, quite uh, spectacular and all of the great uh, feedback that came as well through the report outs. Just want to remind everyone that our next um, workshop in these series will be on February 9th. It will be focused on enhancing outcomes in a more person-centered and inclusive clinical trials enterprise. Um, so please mark that on your calendars. I'd like to thank the forum, uh, the planning committee, and the National Academies for supporting this workshop. So thank you, everyone. Have a fantastic rest of the day. Bye-bye. And Esther, if I could just add one quick thing I meant to say, uh, a little piece of optional homework if before the next February 9th seminar. Take a look at the Clinical Trial Transformation Initiative website uh, to the link that Pam sent about uh, the work that's taking place by that group that overlaps in subject area with what we're doing, and that might help us uh, have an even better workshop next time. So thanks very much again.